This is Ice Cream Gecko, and in today's video we're going to take a look at something entirely different from the usual program that is uploaded to this channel. We're going to take a look at the Avenue Ultralight Titanium Alcohol Stove. I wanted to buy this for a long time now, but I always thought it would be too expensive with customs fees added to it overall. Um, so far I haven't heard of customs yet, so maybe they are fine with this particular purchase. I bought this for 35 euros and 61 cents and it came by airmail. It came a lot quicker than expected. This is why this is here today. I had something different planned for today. This is not a review, this is just a quick first look or unboxing or overview, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'd like to take a bit more time with an actual review and these ones are not going to be fired up today. Let's take a quick look at uh, something I cannot read and at something I can barely read. Yeah, I think you can read that if you pause the video. And let's take out the little stove itself. Looks very, very pretty, I've got to say. Um, I like the looks of this a bit more than the Trangia. <laughs> this seems to be a bit more resistance to discoloration over time, I would assume. Apart from the bluing of the titanium that is going to occur up there. Little measurement markings on the inside in milliliters, 30 and 60 right there and one and two fluid ounces right there. You can see down there the little holes at the very bottom of the inner wall. Those are our little ports where the ethanol or whatever you put in these things can uh, get to the wick itself a bit more easily. Maybe which one? There, there you can see the fiberglass wicking quite well. It's a little mesh that's inside here and crimped I think here on the very top. Let's take a look at the bottom as well, real quick. Uh, warning, use alcohol only, yeah? No gasoline, and do not refuel heated stove. That's, a very, that's very good advice as well. Don't really want to have any burning liquid bottles anywhere near you. Bad idea. I'm really looking forward to trying this particular one out. I have the Trangia right here, and they look quite similar. Of course, the Avenue doesn't have a snuff cap or a lid, let alone a screw on lid, which is nice for, for this one. So you can conserve a bit of a bit of spirit, ethanol, whatever you have, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I usually I let this run dry anyway, because you can see right there, I've got a bit of corrosion in there, it doesn't really look nice. I don't think it really, you know, hampers the performance of the entire thing, but it just doesn't. It looks off. Comparing the bottoms of these things, I don't think that these will have any trouble standing upright. Let's compare the sides of the things. It's quite interesting. The lip of the Trangia fits right over the, well, throat, whatever, the belly <laughs> of the Avenue stove. Interesting, very interesting. And on the very top they are quite similar as well. I'll get the cross stand real quick and see if it fits on this as well as it does on this. Here we are with the little very simple cross stand that I like to use. I prefer using the... I had it together, right? Now it's... now it's jamming up on me. Um, I prefer to use that... that Bush box fake the Elixada one. Um, you know, it's a bit more, bit more air for the stove itself, and it gives a bit more, a bit better performance, I think. But uh, this one right here is quite, quite nice to use. So on the Tangier one, it fits lovely, of course. And let's see if it fits on the Avenue. It fits all right as well. Although, oh, uh, I'm glad that I tried this out. Maybe you can see it right here. If it sits on the it doesn't really sit properly anywhere. That's interesting. Now it doesn't it doesn't touch here and it doesn't touch it only touches barely here on that little rounded piece all the way around. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I'm glad that I that I tried this out. Uh, I didn't expect that. I thought it would be as flush as it does on the Trangia. If you look on the Trangia, it doesn't touch on the, you know, up there where my thumb is, but it does sit quite well on this lip. It doesn't really do that as well. On here, it wiggles around a bit, but it doesn't, you know, there's no, 
no angling going on on this one on the avenue. Not much, not much. I won't say anything too bad about this, but yeah, it's not as steady. Good. Glad that I tried this out. Um, with with other pot stands, I think it's going to fit just fine. I'll take a few measurements right now. 67 millimeters and something in inches. I'm not quite sure what that is in inches. Oh, it's called 2.633 inches or do you say that with some fraction? I'm, oh, I'm always confused. Now if you look closely, we weren't really right up to the little belly right there. Let's do a very similar thing with the trangia. Let's set it right there. Let's not, let's not get into the notch. And here we are at 2.745 and a half inches in millimeters. That's 69.7, about 70 millimeters. So a bit, a bit larger in diameter. Interesting. Let's take a look at the height of the entire thing. About 42 millimeters. I mean, th these are just rough estimates, you know. It's nothing to, to obsess about. That's it in inches. With the entire thermal expansion of these things, you know, you wouldn't really want to fit these too snugly anywhere. That's the height of the avenue. And let's put that into millimeters as well. 41.9, 42, yeah. Did I measure that before? I think I did. Let's measure the inside of this thing. Let's try to get the center. Uh, about 40 millimeters. Let's try to get it on here as well. Somewhat centered and about 40 millimeters. Okay, the inside is all right, quite close. That's decent enough. But as you have seen, that little that little slope right there, that uh, might cause some issues with some cross stands, maybe some pot stands or anything you really want to put onto that thing. Um, something that many people ask, that I asked myself as well, the snuff cap right here, does it fit on the avenue? It does. Also wiggles a bit, but it uh, really does the same thing when you look at it. The pool itself is going to burn, the jets really aren't, and this is exactly what it does right here. Now the lid itself is not going to work all that well. <laughs> Even if it was fitting snugly, everything would just run out on the side jets. Now I'm really looking forward to using this. Um, I'm looking forward to the titanium cracks and um, I'm looking forward to quicker boil times because at the end of the day I'm, I'm never really cooking with these alcohol burners. I just heat something up and if it's a bit quicker that's not that big of a deal, but um, if it's more efficient or if it actually gets going quickly when it's really cold outside, that's that's a bigger thing for me. Because with the Trangia, if it, if it gets around the freezing point outside, it does take quite some time. Then you maybe want to use these winter attachments and all that. And if I do not have to use something like that with the Avenue, then uh, this is going to go into the kit forever, basically. And this is then going to become a backup. I will see though. I'm not quite sure about that yet. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm eager to try it out. Anyway, bit of a pointless video. Uh, I hope you got some measurements out of here. Something useful, maybe. And um, yeah, while I hope that I didn't screw up the measurements too much, I thank you very much for watching this particular video. If you've got a question or a video suggestion, leave it in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I'm going to see you soon. Until then, bye bye.